What's up, y'all? Thanks for hanging out with us. Oh, that's our uh, that's our ad. There we go. Hey, I, and by the way, thank you for. I mean, skip it all day. I skip every ad. Thanks for sticking around long enough to skip it. If you got time, if you're just hanging out, I think I get like we get like an extra one point four fractions of a cent. Yeah. I mean, if, and all you have to do is watch it, an ad that I have no I even no idea what it is. But thank you for watching it and. And if uh, maybe I get like you know maybe maybe we split uh, or uh, I don't even know what currency they'd pay us in. I don't even know how to, how that even works. Whiskey, yeah, that's that's the right. If kind. we get up to our, a delicious bottle of whiskey, that would be quite a celebration. I would celebrate that. Let's go ahead and get started here. It's Tuesday night. He's Kevin Ricca. Nice to be back down in the basement. Always nice to be at home after a week off doing draft stuff elsewhere. And I'm Ken Marangolo, and on behalf of First Amendment Sports, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Nat Shift. I like the first person that we introduce of the night is Tuesday itself. That's it. He deserves, he or she, I mean, Tuesday deserves an introduction. Tuesdays have taken on a whole new meaning in my life over the last three and a half years. I know. That's I appreciate fact. that. I'm not going to... Yeah. I, know, I know that uh, it is a whole different day of the week. That's got a Friday feel to it. I know. It's, and now on Friday, I'm kind of like, man, this feels a little bit like Tuesday. <laughs> it's a great feeling. All right. What's not been a, a, a super great feeling um, has been the uh, overall play of the Washington Nationals. We're here to cover the month of April, our first month. It is April... Uh, 30th, we are fourth place in the National League East at 12 and 15. The Washington Nationals, as we tape this show, is uh, on live. The Nats are against uh, the Cards. The Nats are up one nothing, wearing a, a sweet jersey. Sweet uni. Spanky looked good running around the base pass after he just went yard there in that sweet navy blue. Nationals across the front. It's got a little softball jersey feel on the neck. Yeah. I'm digging it. Would you get that in a t-shirt jersey, or would you go with, like, authentic? I, I'm i not a big jersey wearer, but I would get the Nats, the Nationals t-shirt. Yeah, I'd rock that. A t-shirt jersey is a great jersey for people who aren't really jersey people, because I, I get it. I don't look good in almost yeah. any jersey that you can imagine. I mean, they're all built for gigantic people by design. Like, me putting a football jersey on, which I love to do, you know, with you know, you, you, no pads. I, I mean, mean, it's true. As I said here in a... And a and the, the Nats spring training hat and my and my Nats T-shirt. You know, it's hard to get a jersey and and then have to afford some Air Force Ones these days. You know, you're 43 yeah. years old. You know, you, just to go up to the Safeway, you got to look fresh. That's not the case anymore. No, I, I, I show up usually unfresh at Safeway. Worst uh, jersey that people wear, uh, obviously, is the NBA jersey. I mean, it's just a tank top. Everybody. I mean, and, and there's a time and a place for a tank top. Tank tops have a ton of value. This is no knock against tank tops. It is a knock against. Every all the people who shouldn't be wearing NBA jerseys who do. When someone outsmarts the marketers and develops the ability to attach a different number and last name to said shirt, because there's nothing that bothers me worse than traveling the United States, being down in San Antonio a couple months back and seeing on Football Sunday a mixture of RG3 jerseys. There was a Colt yep. Brennan jersey I took a picture of and sent right. you guys. It just bothers the crap out of me. Now, Colt not, Brennan does live on. That, and that's different. That's a bit of a, like, I'm a fan. Colt Brennan was never the guy. But you just can't wear an outdated jersey somewhere, man. It's, it's Well, okay. not an outdated, not an outdated nobody. I mean, obviously, classic is classic. Right. Like a Riggins jersey? Have at it. Who Who is the classic jersey for the Nats besides Zimmerman? Who? Can, can you rock a Brian Schneider still? I think you, I think there's a couple guys you can rock only because like I Schneider guess. was our first one of our first good players. I know, but he showed up on every PED list known to man. Yeah, yeah. That's a tough one. Who was the outfielder? Wakefield. I want to say, or, or um, I'm going to never. I'm going to. He was our best player on day one. Who, the forty forty guy, the, the yeah, guy from the Yankees. The outfielder. Uh, yeah. and I thought uh, it was Andrew Wakefield or something. I can't. Uh, the name's going to. It's going to kill me. I'm talking about the uh, Dominican guy. He was a 40 40 star. Oh, you're talking about base. Soriano. Soriano. Yeah, That's I'm talking right. about like a remember. guy when, when they came to D.C. Jose Vidro? No. Uh, anyway, not Levon <laughs> Hernandez. I don't know how. Levon is a great three. I think Levon stands strong. A Levon jersey, absolutely. His name is Levon. He shall be a good man. Uh, uh, hey, when he would bunt and then just kind of waddle up the first baseline talking trash on a sack bunt, I loved it. 
He was amazing at laying it down. He was in no hurry to get to first, and he was a pro at it. I loved it. I'm not gonna. Th- I'm, I'm gonna think of his name later. I think it said Wedge in it. Wilkerson. Wilker- was it Wilkerson? It was Wilkerson. Brad, Brad Wilkerson, Wilkerson the, the outfielder. Yeah. By the way, Robles just went yard. We got we're up two nothing. This is a great game and a great start against a team in the St. Louis Cardinals, um, who's had our number uh, in a variety of places. As a Nats fan, I I I never hated on the Cards for my whole life because we didn't have a National League team our whole lives to root for and have a foe like the Cards. Their uh, stadium's a cathedral. They've generally done it right, you know, as far as racking up wins. Um, they had a face of the franchise in, in, the, in the manager spot forever. And while we were rooting for Cal Ripken Jr. at the shortstop position, they had the Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. And he was absolutely electric to watch play baseball, and I like them for that reason. And they were the team that, for a long stretch of time in the early 2000s, even up, uh, you know, probably the late 90s, besides the Braves, the Cardinals had the mo- more wins than anybody uh, in the in the majors, and they yeah. just every year they just put another big number down, and um, they were, they just were a, a, a winner, and you knew that if you follow baseball, you knew they were a winner, and unless you were the Cubs or the Pirates or some National League team over there that be- got beat up by them every year, you didn't hate them. You know now we've gotten beat up by them a little bit in the postseason, and and we're scuffling out of the gate after a 12 and 15 start, including a loss to them. And they're the first team of a seven or eight or nine team stretch, Kevin, all at 500 or better. Right. And we need to take advantage of that. But right now, Ken, we are extremely average in my mind. You know, uh, not having Rendon, you know, in the past when you had a, a, a Harper and a, and, a, and a Zimmerman in his prime and, you know, we could withstand some of these injuries a tad bit better at the plate. Not having Rendon in the heart of that order, you are asking right now three gentlemen, two of which are 21, one's 20. Yep. To play a lot, have a lot of at bats. I'm just talking about this particular week, you know. And I love the fact that we have those guys, but we're putting a lot on their shoulders. As well, you well, those go yard. One of one of those guys was going to be asked to be the NL MVP, anyways. I know and it's a big expectation, and our pitching staff is withstanding that. Our bullpen obviously is not, and if our if, if our bullpen is not, then you've got to depend on these guys to score a ton of runs. And it's a, I think it's a bit unfair uh, to some of the people with the high expectations. But hey, with this franchise. We, we're supposed to have those expectations. We're supposed to feel this way. I uh, just look at what we got right now, and you know the Dozers, the Suzukis, the Gomes—they're doing okay. Defoe's been hot lately. You know he's been all right, but I don't know if these are the guys. And well, you, you take Zim out and put him in a walking boot with plantar fasciitis. You got Rendon with a, yeah. a banged up elbow. That's too. It's a lot bigger of a loss for us these days, I believe. Well, Zimmerman's got plantar fasciitis for the rest of the time we have him as a net. So we're just going to be. This is, this is the new normal uh, for for Ryan Zimmerman. Yep. Anthony Rendon going down hurts because he's an MVP candidate, but at the same time, uh, the Washington Nationals are with, are currently built. I don't know how much more they're built, but at the time, you br- they're able to bring in a Carter Keyboom and move a guy like Howie Kendrick, and you still got bats in the lineup. Oh, Kendrick. Kendrick and Eaton have been fighters and dogs, and I love them for it. That's what we asked for two weeks ago, right? Three weeks ago. We've been getting that. It's uh, The onus is on the bullpen. We're not, you know, we're not breaking news here. You yep. know, that's a fact. Uh, you just gotta hope Rosenthal gets his his, his act together because there's no way around it. We need him. There's Kendrick and and Rendon are the highest uh, war guys. Um, just to drop a quick little stat stat line on you, I'm, I hate saying that, but I, I'm trying trying to follow it more because it ends up ma- actually mattering. Uh, Trey Turner still has um, a half a pl- plus point five on the war. I, I apologize for not mentioning Trey Turner in my yeah. Rendon Zimmerman out. That's yeah. That's that's. We- so this is so, yeah, this, this is what it is right now. This yeah. is who we are. We gotta we we've gotta fight our way through this against like you said the next seven or eight teams all hovering around five hundred. Uh, and our, that's 20, 20, 25 games. That's gonna be that's gonna be the, the time span that you're gonna be missing. Uh, potentially still be missing a guy like Turner. Potentially missing a guy like Eaton. It's fair to be stretched thin if you lose Rendon yep. and Turner. Any team that loses a Rendon and Turner uh, is gonna be probably gonna be hard pressed to make up for it. Um, and, and right now the, the the Nats are without a doubt, and and you know what, when you got the top three strikeout guys in the National League on one starting staff, and you got yep. Anibal Sanchez coming in and, and, and pitching good, you know, Anibal. I'm not saying he's proving anyone wrong or doing anything he wasn't supposed to do. He's doing exactly what we've asked. Yep, he, he's eating innings and he's keeping us in games, and I, th- I think he's been crafty as hell. Uh, I like when he's on the hill. Uh, now I'm a little bit more worried about about my guy Hellickson. You know he's been scuffling the last few times out, and I know that's who he is. That's you know he's not going to come out and give you what he has been doing is five to six innings casually. 
keeping yep. us in ball games. I love what Fetty did. Kind of weird. We brought him up and sat him back down, but I know he's got four more days, so you know, fair enough. But hey, how about him saving the day with 48 pitches, 49 maybe, and four innings, two hits. It was huge. One of the few times this year the, the bullpen has you know, put goose eggs up on the board, yep. inning in, inning out. It was big. And I love knowing that he's down there. That's a that's a good feeling because, you know, he's a different guy this year. You know, he he was filthy out there. He looked great. If they can get by with uh, Hellickson for a little while longer, I'm okay with that. But he was never. I mean, you can't. No, no World Series contender. Their number five guy in April is the guy they they, they you know. First of all, you're not counting on a guy like that no. in the playoffs, but you're counting on that guy to help you get you there. And that that can churn. We can churn that spot if, if Hellickson. Uh, is, is, is fighting it. Yeah, we're counting on Fetty and Ross. And we're Fetty bringing them along slowly because we're playing with 24 instead of 25. We shortened our bench. I get that. But what if Anthony Rendon is day in, day out? You know what I mean? You don't want to put him out there for too long. Uh, I get it. I think it's the nature of the injury more so than F the Nats. I think they've handled a majority of business with, a, with, a, with flying colors. So I'm not ready to sit here and just crucify them for this aspect of it. Yep. But I, I sure wish it went a little differently. I uh, can't lie about that. But I think it has to do with the injury itself. Yep. Well, get him right. The the weird silver lining is that you do have a guy like Hellickson who is uh he's not he's not he's not Scherzer, he's not Strasburg. This uh, that's the obvious. Let's leave it there. But you also have a bullpen that's been crapped on and all of a sudden there, you know, Fetty comes in and solidifies things and the loss to the Cards, 6-3. That was, you know, Corbin had that terrible inning, you know, and know it, man. and that's un- uncharacteristic of him. But you still, you look at the final score, and that's all there was: six runs in one inning. It's frustrating as shit. Yep. And Corbin has been lights out. Uh, I think he's had one bad inning, and you know, it's just timing with this, timely hitting, timely plays. That's what it is. That's what baseball is. It's how we won a million games, you know, two to six years ago. So let's bottle that formula and bring it back a little bit. So we had a losing week uh, on the net shift. Uh, I believe we only have one winning week. But instead of covering kind of the week that was, which is what we like to do, I, I thought that a good April wrap-up would be to, to mention this, because this stood out to me. In the first month, Kevin, we only had three back-to-back wins. Yeah. All month long. Yep. That's almost 30 games, only three times we won two games in a row, and we lost two or more games in a row, I believe five times. And I wanted to check that, two, three... Well, four four times, and one one of those was a three game losing streak. And how many times have we lost? I believe there's only one series that we've won the opening game of the series. It might be two, but uh, as of as of a mm. week ago, I think I think the, we have the, lost only the Mets we in won. the beginning of the season. That is no way to start a series. You know, I'm not. I'm listen. I'm no baseball manager, but losing the first game of a damn three game series every time puts yep. you behind the eight ball. You're scrambling. The way you're scrambling is sitting there looking on day, day two thinking about getting swept in day three if you don't pull this off. You're going into day three down two games to, to none in the series and going, we just got to salvage one. Yep. We're not playing from a, a position of confidence. We're the Nats. No. We don't come out and scramble in series. We come out and win two to one. That's who we are. And if you can get this win out of Sanchez tonight, your you're opening, you know, opening game loss of the St. Louis series – is not as hurtful because it's a four-game it's a set, four game, yeah. and you're going to close out with Scherzer and Strasburg. Mm-hmm. So, so let's let's leave it there. We were 12, we, we were absolutely the team you saw on TV in April. Uh, I think we're going to be better than that. I think we can be better than that. I think we're showing signs of being better than that. But right now, 12 and 15 is a pretty accurate, uh, you know, portrait. We do have the four-game set against the Cards that we are in the midst of. We have a weekend series up in Philadelphia. 7 o'clock Friday, 7 o'clock Saturday, Sunday afternoon game at 2. And then you'll see us again on the Nat Shift next Tuesday night with the Nationals on the road in Milwaukee. And that'll be a great series because they'll get Scherzer and Strasburg in that series uh, on the road in Milwaukee. I would like to think that at 12 and 15, that the, the Washington Nationals are... Or not? A, they're not. I don't think anyone's looking at this team and thinking, "All right, these guys. This is this is who they are over 162 games." Mm-hmm. I think they're, it's gonna it's gonna come up to a time when people do say that. I don't think I don't think that's true at this point in time. Well, I not love that personally. stat you just said. Not that I love it. I think it's very uh, telling and very interesting. Three 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 times we've won games consecutively, 
in the course of the season. Uh, that that says everything to me right there. You know, we're we're a franchise used to going on seven, eight, nine, ten game tears. Yep. You know, all of a sudden we're hot, and all of a sudden we're cruising up until the second half of last season, uh, after May. Uh, uh, you know, you, you look at what's happening here. This team has to become this team. It has to become this year's team. This influx of young talent blending in with the veterans, a couple new guys on the staff and in the bullpen. You know. It's impossible to ask them just to arrive and us to be, you know, right now 20 and 7 or some shit. Like, yeah. that's not – and I think we do play hard. I think it's just uh, – I think it's part of this team figuring out who we are. Who are we? Obviously, we're a team that's going to throw starting pitching at you out the wazoo. Obviously, we got to get better in the bullpen. But we got to start hitting the ball. we got to start taking care of Scherzer. We've got to score some runs for this guy. It's, these are things that have to happen organically. Yep. You know, like we talked about scuffling and having this, you know, iron sharpening iron mentality and not coming in two years ago like we did, just coasting through with a, a JV lineup and heading into the postseason and getting rolled uh, in a tough scenario. We've been in tough scenarios. I think it's been four extra inning games. I think we've split the four. I think there's been another six one run games. We're right around 500 in those. So I think battle tested is one thing, but getting those W's in those battles. And we've got about three or four of them yeah. that are big time. You know, losing to Philly with the first game, the huge come from behind, and then the blowout the next day was one of the sweetest series, and it's the only one we've won. You know, yeah. I, I, that, that's, that got me thinking this team's got some hearts, got some balls. You know, we're, gonna, we're, we're tough as nails, and we've got tough guys on this squad. It'd be nice to have them healthy. D.C. Wait. sports health has been the number one topic for eternity, it feels like. It has. It is impossible to escape. It seems it's impossible like to escape. Every time I turn on a game, they're fl flashing the camera up to this to a skybox where some player on one of my favorite teams is either like in a neck halo or like a, a full body immobilizer. Or I mean, I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? Can you just not go to the skybox anymore? I don't need to see TJ Oshi broken in a body cast know. You know, on, the, in the side. <sighs> well, you remember my reaction when we saw Trey Turner square up, and I said it, it hit his finger directly. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm glad it didn't go into a million pieces. I thought we were going to have to go outside and bury something into a time capsule to, to stop this nonsense that I've always completely been against, the, the curse of DC. But no, it's sports. It's, it's what happens. But damn if it doesn't happen to us, tremendous amount. I'm, I, I am holding my breath to get Trey back. He looked so amazing uh, in his first week out. So I'm excited. I'm excited for them to just let him get back to being 100 percent so that when he goes out there, he just picks up where he left Shoeless off. Shoeless Trey Turner, man. He came out of a cornfield in Iowa in the movies. I mean, he had he had it going. He's he's he is so much fun to watch. He's worth the price of admission. I thought to myself at a certain point on Sunday, I think Wilmer Defoe. I'm trying to think of the my my one good takeaway leave the show, close it out with Wilmer Defoe as Arya Stark. Because you and you made me think of it, Kevin, when you said, you know, we, we've been through some stuff. I think back to that that Dodger series where you know we go to the end of our bench and Wilmer Defoe ends up being the last out uh, of that game and of our entire season, and how terrible that was to stomach, and how hard it must have been for him. I mean, he's easily a guy who could yeah. have never played for the Nationals again. Meanwhile, he's been on the team the entire time. He's come up in crucial situations, including over. Um, the weekend, he had some big hits. He's playing a great defense. Um, I, I, he's, a, he's a good player for us to have. And if he gets another chance to be in that position in the, in the postseason, I'll have a much better feeling in my stomach, you know, at knowing that I think he can actually do it because of all the stuff that he has been through. So as the switch hitter, he drops the bat from the left hand to the right, and he plunges it deep. Hopefully into, into the, the cards, into the, into the into guts the, of the yeah, cards. There you I, go. Or the Phillies, either one. I'll take well, you know one. what? He's, uh, as, as the faceless man you're describing, he, the last 13 games in the last two weeks, he's 11 for 33. He's leading the team in batting average over there this two-week span. So you, you pick the right guy. He's right yeah. on top of the mess. He is. He And he. I, I'll be excited to see him uh, wear that awesome jersey in a postseason game. Does that make Bryce the Night King? No, don't give him that much credit. All right. He's one of the, he'll be like one of the, you know. Night King doesn't hit like, 240, bro. <laughs> he can be Cersei. <laughs> Bryce Harper is Cersei Lannister. You know he you heard it from he, here. He's got the hair of the brother. He, well, but and now, not anymore. Now he's got the hair of the sister. Uh, that's true. Well, I've got the hair of the dog in that glass right there. And mm, I'm feeling pretty feeling good, good here on a Tuesday. Looking forward to the, watching Annabal get out of this inning and, and, and the Nats climb up on top here. Get back. We gotta, we gotta be fifteen and fifteen, uh, ideally. It's no more stranded wins. I, I'll see if I can't keep an eye on those stranded wins. The mo more stranded wins you have, the worse your season uh, is going. I, I promise you. Until next Tuesday night, 
He's Kevin Ricca. Yeah, go Nats. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us and, and covering our favorite baseball team in the, in the nation. I'm Ken Marangolo on behalf of First Amendment Sports. This was the Nat Shift. Come on, Annie Bow. Get out of this inning. Uh.